And what we see is the, the early believers had a heart for ministry. Now, before we read this, I want to show you what happened to them, okay? Uh, I'm going to read with you Mark 2, but I want you to see what the people that heard these words from Christ did. And we have this little snippet from uh, some ancient literature, but I'm going to read you the whole thing, but just the center is this. About A.D. 133, Aristides, he was a teacher of philosophy in the Roman province of Asia, modern Turkey, presented to the emperor Hadrian, the great builder, he built the Pantheon and a lot of other stuff if you are into Roman culture. Uh, Hadrian wanted to know what to do with these Christians. They were just multiplying. I mean, Nero tried to, you know, wipe them out and, and, and they, they just multiplied. So this man presented a defense, and this is what he said. Now the Christians, O king, have the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ himself engraven on their hearts. And they observe, looking for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. They do not covet men's goods. They love their neighbors. They despise not the widow. They grieve not the orphan. He that hath distributeth liberally to him that hath not. If they see a stranger, they bring him under their roof and they rejoice over him as if it was their own brother. For they call themselves brethren, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit and in God. Now this note, this is amazing. And if there is among them a man that is poor and needy, and they have not an abundance of necessities, they fast two or three days that they may supply the needy with their necessary food. When's the last time you did that? Don't tell us. But it's rare. Most of us think that when I have, you know, my tuition and my car, you know, all nice and all my electronic stuff and, you know, my, you know, spring break trip all figured out and everything else paid for and little coffee time, whatever's left, I might give to someone if they really need it and I think they're legit. That's our float-down-the-stream mindset. Me first, my needs, take care of everything, be comfortable, secure, and everything else. But for Christ's sake, the early Christians were ready to lay down their lives. And so the, the record of the first century church was, behold how they love one another. I guess the question for all of us this morning is, what will we be known for? Will it be that we're willing to die for Christ and even more that we're willing to live for him by loving people and his enemies? The early Christians fasted so they would have more to give to the needy. That means they did not have a lot stored up. Accounts like that from history are stirring. Isn't that stirring? I mean, that's, wow. But that isn't why we fast. You don't, you don't say because St. Onephorus of, you know, Cyprius did this, we want to too. No. That's why we go to Mark chapter 2. Because let's look at what the original setting was that Christ had. Uh, here are Christ's words, and these are the most important words in the Bible on fasting for us. And if you understand what Jesus is saying, this can be life-altering. Okay? Verse 20. But the, Mark 2.20, but the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Now look up. What is this talking about? This is again, Jesus is saying, I'm going to die on the cross. I'm going to be buried. I'm going to rise again. And then I'm going to ascend back to my father and sit at his right hand. This is Jesus talking about his death, burial, and resurrection and ascension. And he says, I'm the bridegroom. You're my bride. I'm going to be taken away from you. And just like the bride every day was looking at her calendar and wondering, maybe it's today, maybe it's today, maybe it's today, maybe he's going to come. I want to be ready at any moment. He might come at night. He might come. I don't know when. I want to be ready. Look at verse 20. The days will come when your bridegroom will be taken away from them. Now look at the next phrase. And then they will fast in those days. Who's that? That's everybody who's been purchased, bought, redeemed, forgiven, and indwelt by Christ. They, that's all New Testament believers. Then they will fast in those days. Jesus said that fasting would be 
universal in his church. Woo. Eating might be. Fasting is not. Why? Well, look at verse 21. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth, that's the, the new covenant church, on an old garment, that's Judaism. Or else the new piece pulls away from the old and its tear is made worse. Verse 22, no one puts new wine into old wineskins or else the new wine bursts the wineskins and the, old, and the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine is put into new wineskins. What's he talking about? He's talking about not an external, you must fast on this day and, and, and look sad and don't talk. But it's a transformational I'm engaged to him, and I miss him so much that I can't help but think about him every day and wonder if he's going to come and get me today. That's the underlying motivation for fasting, and it changes our lives.